Two, one. Peace to everybody tuning in. Mom in Plain View. My name is Brother Cephas. My reader today is Brother Cam. And the title of today's class is You Must Endure Until the End to Be Saved. And the reason why. Is it on now? Yeah, it's on now. Okay. The title of today's class is. We must endure until the end to be saved. And the reason why I put together this class is simply because of, you know, what are we believing as a Christian community today? You look around us and there is no form of order. People feel like they can do whatever they want to. And it's not like I'm trying to be the bad guy, but that's what's really going on. People feel like they can do whatever they want to and feel as if there will be no circumstance. Because you got, you know, God in the Old Testament, which was really Jesus before he came into the flesh, and he laid down laws for people to live by. However, you know, we now he's coming to the flesh and he's died for our sins, and he's given us this free gift called grace. And because we were given that, people feel as if, well, now I'm saved by grace. I require no works. I require no form of law to be governed by. And really, this doctrine only hurts you because it gets you uncomfortable. It doesn't make you realize that you got to do some form of changing in your walk with Christ. That's all this is doing. When you, they tell you you are saved by grace, they are really they are giving you the low blow that you don't even know is coming your way. And really, you got to ask yourself, what are you being saved from? Because when God, when Jesus died for our sins, he's giving you the opportunity to get everlasting life and not, you know, reap the destruction of the second death, which is, you know, everlasting fire. That's what you want to be saved from. But we are still flesh and blood people saying we were saved, you know, October 27th in 1983. You still have a flesh and blood body. Therefore, what are you saved from? You're not saved from that second death yet. Because as we're going to see from all the examples in this Bible, that even though they want to say Paul is telling you, you don't have to have any works, you just need to call on the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Listen, that's not the case. Jesus didn't tell you that either. We have to have some form of work and we have to endure until the end. Let's turn over to Romans chapter 10. Because this is common, commonly misinterpreted as to... How we get our salvation. So Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Right. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And that's really actually true statement but that's not all there is that's not all to the equation because you do need to believe that jesus is lord you need to believe in him because ultimately we were born into sin before we even really acknowledge jesus we were living in sin so sin was already on the table before we realized it so we need to believe in this individual but that is just step one keep going for who Yes. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth. I'm sorry, read verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, right. and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So with the heart, with the, with the mind, with the mind, man believeth unto righteousness. So you're believing in this. Not only that, but it says, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, understand like we in the AA meeting, right? And I'd be like, hi, my name is Cephas. I'm an alcoholic. In order for me to make steps towards to, you know, begin to leave that club, beginning to stop being an alcoholic, guess what I have to do? I have to stop drinking alcohol. You know, people will be like, I'm one year sober, two years sober, so forth. So if I'm going to say, hi, I'm Cephas, I'm a sinner, guess what I have to do in order to stop being a sinner? I have to stop sinning. And what is sin? Transgression of the law, according to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. 
So not only do you need to confess that he is Lord, you also have to stop sinning. And this takes place in this battleground that you're in right now, waiting for the Lord to get back. Jump down to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Right. So they said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So regardless of what nationality you are, regardless of what time period you were born in, if you believed in him, you have an opportunity to get everlasting life. Keep going. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Right. Because you need someone to teach you. Finish that verse up. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Because you require to be taught. Whenever you look, you know, for example, when Jesus was talking to his disciples in Matthew 28, before he told them to go baptize the people, he said, teach them. You see, when Paul was in prison and the guard, like when they were getting free, the guard was looking at what he needed to do to be saved. Paul had to teach him. Philip in the unit. Philip had to teach him. So you're required to know something. So there's a, you know, a great responsibility on these preachers to teach you about the Jesus of this Bible. And you can't believe in vain. So if you're being taught of a different Jesus, then you're, the confession you make is not valid. Let's turn over to our next scripture, Jude chapter 1. Because you have a lot of pastors out here, and this class isn't directed towards the pastors, per se, but they play a role in you, you know, learning about God. Because in Malachi chapter 2, it tells you that, you know, the, the priest, he had the law in his mouth. And as an individual, you should be seeking the law out of his mouth because he is a messenger of God. That's how you can identify this priest. Because he gives you the law, and it says that he's going to turn these people away from their sins. That's part of your walk. You believe in Jesus, and you'd be turned away from your sins. But from what we get in modern Christianity today is no one is trying to, you know, call a spade a spade. No one's trying to call it for what it is. There's a lot of sin taking place, and we need to rid it from our minds. So Jude, Jude chapter three, Jude chapter one and verse three. Let me get there. Go ahead and read, please. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. So Jude is trying to talk to you about the common salvation, and this salvation, because you read in John chapter four, tells you, listen, salvation is of the Jews. They understand how to get salvation, and listen, everybody has to take that same walk. It's one faith, one Lord. One baptism, one mindset, one judgment, one way of thinking. So it's a common salvation. Go ahead. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you. Right, he's going to exhort you, right? I mean, he's going he's gonna to amp you up. He's trying to hype you up right now. Go ahead. That you should earnestly contend. That you earnestly contend for what? For the faith. For the faith. Because we read that faith without works is dead. That's why you have to earnestly, earnestly right here. I decided to write down a definition for you. Earnestly means with sincere or intense conviction, right? And contend means to struggle to surmount or over overcome. So for this faith, you know, and the faith is that, listen, Jesus died for my sins. And the Father, you know, Jesus died, but the Father rose up. And guess what? If, Jesus was able to be risen up. I can get risen up into everlasting life also. We got to contend for that faith right there. Keep going. Contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That was once delivered to the saints. Meaning, listen, this belief in this faith has never changed. It's always been the same. And keep in mind, this one saved, always saved, didn't start till centuries later after Jesus died. It never came out of his lips. Keep going. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. Ungodly men, what they do? Turning the grace of our God into lascivious. And that's what they've done. They, they tell you, listen, you have grace, you no longer need to have works. You have faith, you no longer need to have works. But really, they're getting you comfortable, like I said, and you don't have to have any form of work, but you need to go to church on Sunday. That sounds like work. You need to tithe. That sounds like works. 
Do away with the law, but pick and choose which, with what benefits the, the preacher. So you have right here, it says, ungodly men turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness because this grace is a great thing. This gives us an opportunity to get into everlasting life. Give us the opportunity to now that we know that we have sinned, we can stop sinning and endure. Stop sinning till the Lord get back. And still, and you, of course, you still got to continue to stop sinning. But this grace was given to us. Now we have a chance to live right. But it doesn't mean once you get it, you do nothing. Keep going. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. <clears throat> Keep going. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. So Jude is like, let me remind you of something real quick. Though you, knew, though you once knew this. Go ahead. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. And listen, you can't get more saved in this lifetime like the Egyptians did. How they saw the hand of God free them from Pharaoh, part the Red Sea, kill Pharaoh and his army right behind them and bring them to dry land. They literally saw this. It, you know, and, it, and Moses said, it said, look at the self, see the salvation of the Lord when this was taking place. So he saved the people out of the land of Egypt. But what happened soon after? Afterward, destroyed them that believed not. So afterwards, he still destroyed those who believed not. 20 and older, you got killed other than Joshua and Caleb. I thought once you got saved, you, you, you were straight. Because you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 that they had a baptism on the Moses. You know, that was their form of baptism. So you should, so they should have been straight from that point on. But because of disbelief, destruction came their way. And that can happen to us too. Because we're not girded up properly due to miseducation in the church. And not only that, because we're not, you know, girding ourselves and enduring unto the end, once we believed in Jesus, guess what? We're still having sin on our plate. Eating it on a daily basis. And by that, we are on a daily basis getting further and further and further away from God, thinking that we're all right with God, but in reality, we're not. Keep going. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Right. Keep going. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth an example, suffering and vengeance of eternal fire. And these are our examples. You know, just like it tells you in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, even though he brought them out of the, uh, out of the Red Sea, out of captivity in Egypt, listen, they were murmuring, they were, you know, dealing with idols in the wilderness, all kind of wickedness. The Lord had to kill them. And you think that you're safe now? It's, listen, we're on a, even, we're under an even greater covenant because now we got the blood of Jesus. So we have less room for error because he tells you, you're not going to go, you know, consider this blood of Jesus on a holy thing. And he's not going to keep dying for your sins. So you have one chance to get this right, which is this lifetime we got right now. So once we believe in him, because of course you need to believe, but you also require to get yourself together. You have to endure until the end to be saved because it didn't start once you made that confession with your mouth. You know, it didn't end there. It began there, but it didn't end. That was step one. Now you're in phase two and you're getting yourself together. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 24. Because there's all kinds of you know, things that take place with this walk. We need to stop sinning within ourselves and we need to teach ourselves how to, you know, endure the hard times that can take place in this lifetime dealing with people because this everlasting life, he said we are sons of God. And it says when he gets back in 1 John, it says when he gets back, we're going to look like him. So we need, if we want to get this everlasting body that's like God's, we need to transform our minds to get it like God. But at the same time, it requires us to get ourselves together. Whatever comes our way, we don't fold. We don't shake. We stand tall. 
Matthew chapter 24, pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. All right, so the disciples are talking to Jesus, and Jesus, they're asking, what's going to happen in the end times? You know, what, what, or what do we have to look for? Because honestly, they thought the end was coming in their lifetime, but instead it's more than likely happening in ours because everything is starting to unfold. The, you know, days are getting quicker, and it's just, it's just falling down quick. The Lord is speeding everything up for his coming to take place. So after they ask this question, Jesus, the first thing out of his mouth, he says, take heed that no man deceive you. Because there's a lot of deception going on. And one that I'm addressing today is the fact that people believe that once they, you know, make that confession with their mouth, that they're saved. But the Lord Jesus is about to say something completely contrary to that, you know. Not only that, he's telling you, not, don't, you know, don't be deceived. He's telling you about the fact that, you know, wars are going to be taking place, battles between nations and, and other nations. There's going to be rumors of wars. Not only that, but there's going to be earthquakes and pestilence, disease, all famine, all types of terror taking place on this earth. And we're seeing that today. But we got to endure all this that's going to be taking place. Jump down to verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So all that taking place, that's just the beginning. Listen, that's that's the storefront. That ain't nothing. But on a personal level, we need to get ourselves right. Keep going. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Listen, if I'm once saved, I always saved. If they're saying they're going to deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, <laughs> listen, I'm going to run. If I'm, on, if I'm always saved, oh, if I, I can deny the Lord even though I just said that I believe in him, because they'll be like, listen, there's nothing you can do. You just saved. You just saved. But if that's the case, then I don't have to go through this, but Jesus is telling you I have to go through this. He's telling you, then shall they deliver you to be afflicted. Why? Because of the belief that you have, that you believe in Jesus, that you make a stand for the, him in this contrary world. Keep going. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Man, I thought if you believed in Jesus, it was, you know, all roses and daffodils and things was going to be straight. Instead, he's telling you the quite contrary. Keep going. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Right. And shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many false prophets, not just a few, but many. Keep going. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And understand this, because because iniquity shall abound, and iniquity is sin. We understand that sin is a transgression of the law, because no one wants to keep this law and believe they are once saved, always saved. You know, that's part of that also. Listen, the heart, the love of many shall wax cold. Because the law is what's teaching you how to love. When you walk, read verse 13. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So Jesus is telling you, in order to be saved, you need to endure to the end. Because you can very well give up. You can very well feel like, this is too hard for me. I'm getting afflicted. They're trying to kill me. They hate me because I believe in this dude. You can very well draw back. But Jesus said, if you want the salvation, listen, I went through it. Listen, I was on that cross. What you mean you can't endure it? Now all they're doing is talking about you at work. All you're doing is you get a little short of a paycheck. No, you got to go through it. So you got to endure. He says right here, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. But the, but another thing I understand says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because there's no law being given out. The law teaches you how to love. Because he told you. You know, in Matthew chapter 22, the first and great commandment is to love thy neighbor with all thy heart, mind, and soul. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. All the prophets and the law hang on these two commandments. So they teach you how to love. They teach you how to produce fruit, how to change, and how to endure what's going to take place. It gives you patience. The law teaches you long suffering, teaches you how to be slow to wrath, you know, slow to speak. 
but, you know, quick to listen. That's what the law is going to teach you because you read it and it gives you examples. But through this, you know, enduring, that's how you're developing a mindset, a mindset that prepares you for this body that he has to give you. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Yes, read this up. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. Because Jesus told you how to endure until the end. And Paul told you in Romans that, you know, if you believe in the name of the Lord, if you confess, you'll be saved. Let's see if that's all across the board, if that's all you need. Because he told you you need to go line upon line to build a case. It's not just Romans. You need to see what else Paul has to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27. When you get 24. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So you got people who train themselves for a marathon. This is not How I Met Your Mother. We are not buying stints. This is not a TV show. This is real life. People discipline themselves in order to run a race, run a marathon. And only one wins, but keep going. <laughs> so, so run that she may obtain. Verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Right. Keep going. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. So every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Like if you, you know, play sports, if you're trying to hit the gym, if you're trying to educate yourself in school, you have to discipline yourself. You have to set aside time and really you know, dwell on a thing that is before yourself so you can get it down. So these people are trying to, you know, build themselves in order to master the thing that they're trying to do. What makes you think when it comes to getting everlasting life that there's nothing we have to do? It's just granted onto us. We just get to live forever. That's a great responsibility to be handed to a, a mortal man. That's why God gives you something to live by and endure with it in order to change your mind and get that body at the end. Keep going. I therefore so run, not as uncertain, uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Now, we are not doing this just to run a, to run a race, you know. And keep in mind, only one wins that, only one wins that race. But with this race for everlasting life, if you enter in, all you got to do is finish. So anybody who enters into this race, you have an opportunity to get it. And I understand not everybody started off running. Some had to crawl. You know, they got the word bit by bit. Then they began to walk because then they started to, you know, build a faithful foundation with the Lord. And then they began to run. But you got to be earnestly contending for the faith like Jude said. And now Paul is saying, therefore, so I run, not as uncertainty. So far, I not as one that beateth the air. So he understands why he's doing it. And he knows what to do to get the prize that he's looking for. Keep going. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. So he says, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Finish that up. Lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Listen, if you go to the gym and work out all the time and then you decide to stop, over time it's going to show. Just like if you go into school and you just stop studying, it's going to show. So if you decide to not endure this walk, it's going to show. You will get cut off. It's required of you to endure. That's what Jesus said. And the first, same person who wrote Corinthians wrote Romans. And he's telling you, listen, I run and I keep my body under subjection. Just in case I don't even become a castaway myself. Because it's possible for him. Let's turn over to... 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again. Unto a lively hope. So he's given us into a lively hope, which is, listen, 
If he can raise Jesus out the grave, listen, we can get that everlasting life as well. Keep going. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Right. To an inheritance incorruptible. Just like Paul said, you know, we, we going for an incorruptible crown. We're looking for everlasting life. This is something we got to strive for. Keep going. And undefiled. And that fate if not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith. Or right, so it, it says that fate is not away, reserved in heaven for you. And keep in mind, if it's in heaven, that don't mean we going up to heaven to get it. Jesus told you, listen, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give unto every man according to his work shall be. So he's coming down with this reward. But we don't get it till he get here. Keep going. Who are kept? Who are kept by the power of God through faith onto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Right, because the salvation is going to be revealed at the last time. When he gets here, that's when we get a hold of it. Keep going. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Listen, if you're going through something, we still got to keep fighting. Rejoice even if you're in manifold temptation. If you're in heaviness, just you know, strap up your boots and just keep going. Because we, we're in the end times right now. We almost there. Keep going. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that, that perish. And this is the thing. We have a trial of our faith. We can say we believe, but the Lord is going to put that to the test. Mm -hmm. You're going to be tried in the fight. You're gonna, it says right here, try being, keep going. Though it be tried with fire. Right. So it says that the trial of your faith being more, much more precious than gold that perish. Listen, gold, gold, we love gold now. But listen, this faith that we got that is being put to the test is better than that. Keep going. Might be found on to praise and honor. Because that faith is going to be found on to praise and honor and what? And glory at, when? The, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. At the appearing of the Lord. Keep going. Whom having not seen, ye love. Right. And whom, though now, ye see him not. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Keep going, verse nine. Receiving the end of your faith. Receiving the end of your faith. What? Even the salvation of your souls. Even the salvation of your souls. I understand that. I said in verse seven that it might be found unto praise and honor and glory when at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So until he get here, we don't have it. We have to endure until that's what I tell you in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 at the twinkling of the eye in a moment at the last trump. Talking about the seventh trump because that, that announces the coming of the Lord. That's when we will get it. Not now, not when you confess with the Lord. Listen, that was step one, but now we have to endure until the end. Let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we got one place, one more place after that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. We get there. We're gonna read that verse, that one verse. Go ahead and read, please. <clears throat> there have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. Now understand this: we all got a, we've all been through temptation, just like Elijah been through it. Listen, Moses been through it. Jesus went through it. It's nothing new under the sun. You know, I'm not saying that you know I had temptation with homosexuality, but someone had to go. Someone's gone through that. But they changed, and I had to change. So we all have to do some form of change. Keep going. But God is faithful. Why is that? Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So he's not going to give you more than you can handle. Because he's going to give you, you know, according to the measure of your faith. If it's too hard for you to handle, he ain't going to give it to you. The only way you will fall is if you're drawn by the, your own lust, according to James chapter 1. According to your own lust, you're going to fall because he won't give you too much to handle that's the, that's the thing that's why he it's expected of you to endure because he won't give you too much to handle. keep going but will with the temptation also make a way to escape so not only will he give you a test because you know bible says he don't tempt he, he'll test you mm -hmm. but not only that he'll give you a way to escape keep going that you may be able to bear it turn over revelation chapter two because not only is he going to test you and perfect that faith that you have, and it's perfected through the works, according to James chapter 2. It's going to be perfected with the works. 
you endure unto the end, you bearing the fruits of the spirit, you, whatever circumstance came your way, you stuck on to the belief of the Lord and you did not transgress against him. He's not going to give you too much you can handle. Remember that. So Revelation chapter 2, and pick it up at verse 25. Go ahead and read. Please. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So whatever you have, hold on to it. Don't let it go. Keep going. And he that overcometh, and keepeth my works until the end. So it says, he that does not overcome and say, I'm saved and I just chill on the couch all day. And he that overcometh. He that overcometh. That's what it's saying. And keepeth my works. And keepeth my works. What else? Until the end. Until the end. What's going to happen? To him will I give power over the nation. So if you don't endure unto the end, you do not get this reward. You don't. Because he set down the guideline. Because listen, you can't get everlasting life from me nor your pastor, nor your friends. It only comes from Jesus himself. So only he can give you the criteria in order to get it. And if you don't fit the description, if you don't follow through, follow suit, you don't get it. I'm sorry. You are not eligible for this everlasting life. You know, because, for example, when I'm getting food stamps, and I'm too, I'm too young to get food stamps to apply with myself and get it. Listen, I'm not eligible for the criteria. But they set it up because they're the one giving it to you. Just like Jesus. He's the only one who can give you criteria to get it. So he's the only one you need to believe in. Believe his words, not your pastor. What does the Bible say? It tells you out of Jesus' mouth right here. Right? This is the last book he told you. And he that overcometh, not him who gave up, not him who just confessed. Because we understand Paul said you need to confess. That's just step one. But it says right here, he that overcometh, and he that will keepeth my works unto the end. So much for you don't need works, because Jesus is telling you otherwise. To him will I give power over the nations. Everlasting life, ruling with his, ruling with Christ for a thousand years in his kingdom when he gets back. That's the reward you will get. But it don't start till he get back. You got to endure to the end. To be saved, I hope somebody got some understanding. You're right. Right there. Bottom right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't want to put my face in front of me. I'll, I'll, I'll just do it. It's okay. I got the same phone. <laughs> I can't put my face in front of me. Okay.